my name is Robert Eves. I run a company called Venture Corporation. We're a building and development company. I live in Marin County and have for eons. I live in, uh, in Mill Valley, so this is home uh, for me, and this project is of special interest to me and, and uh, to my firm. So what I want to do is tell you a little bit about the project that's already approved here and uh, tell you what we think is good about it and bad about it and the mission that's been coming before you. You might wonder if it's already approved, what are you, why are you talking to us? And uh, we'd like to just make it a whole lot better. We think that the project is, is uh, poorly conceived in some ways, and we'd like to make it better. And the best way to do that is to get people to contact the supervisor, and, and if you agree with any of the things you see, and say, "Hey, let's let's make it let's make it a lot better." So, with that, I'm going to refer to my carefully crafted notes again. I want to uh, thank. A special thanks to Justin Kai who uh, allowed this arrangement to take place so I can come in and, and speak before you. And uh, Eric Dreykosen, who is the district manager as well, they were the ones who said, here are the chairs and there's where you plug in your projector. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the, the deal. A couple of interesting facts, and by the way, I'm not going to go on for very long. Uh, and if you have questions, if you'll hold on to them until I shut up, then I'll be very pleased to answer them to the best of my uh, ability. A couple of interesting statistics about Marin County, you probably already know this stuff, is that we have the highest educated population of any county in California. We're just better educated than all the other counties on a per capita basis. We also have the highest priced residential real estate in all of California. There's pockets, little neighborhoods here and there that are pricier than the Marin average, but countywide, this is the top ticket in the, in the state. And then lastly, we have the oldest average age of any county. There's more oldsters here in Marin than any other county on a per capita uh, basis. And yet we have a, an ever-growing shortage of senior living facilities, places for people to move out of their big castles and into a smaller place for their, their uh, senior years. And so that's the, the foundation for this particular property. Uh, a couple of decades ago, two Marin County families bought <coughs> This land, here you can see Lucas Valley Road, over here is uh, Marin Wood and uh, the, the Miller Creek property. Here's Las Galinas, Highway 101, of course, down at the bottom. And the families that came in here bought all of this acreage here. It's about 104, 106 acres of land. And it was decades ago, and uh, they uh, had big ideas for developing grand things on their on their property. Here's a bit of a zoom in. The site that we're going to talk to you about tonight is located here and you'll see lots more about that. So these are current aerials. This is the way that it looks today. It's a hillside, very gentle slope here if you go by. Here's that truck stop that you've seen a thousand times. Very gentle slope here and then it gets steeper as it goes up. And our proposed project is right here at the, at the bottom. This is um, part of the Marin County planning process, and I'll take you through a couple of things. Back in about 1980 or 81, the people who bought the property decided that they were going to develop it, and this was their plan. And uh, this is in existence today. That's here in real. All of this is here in real. And all of this here uh, exists today. But all of this, all of these houses here, a hundred and some houses here, uh, don't exist, and they were part of the developer the family's original master plan. In addition to that, there's two office buildings here and here, a big office building here, another office building here, another office building here, and you would access these from Marinwood on this side and Lucas Valley over here on this side. And so that was the plan, and as you can imagine, it didn't go very far, and it dragged on and on and on as various iterations were, were uh, conceived over the over the years. Here's the same property looking straight down and you can see I pointed out that this exists and this exists. I'll flip back. So these are the ones that exist today and the things coming down over here on the, on the right. And uh, all of this was the, was the rest of the land that they wanted to, to develop in the, in the fashion that we've uh, just described. So uh, the process went on for decades, and lots of different iterations and versions were proposed with fewer houses, fewer office buildings, uh, 
plans changed in, in, over the years. And, and uh, finally, in, uh, in uh, two th January of 2005, this is the actual Marin County Master Plan approval that was approved and signed by a supervisor at that time. And so the project was officially approved. And I'll tell you what the project was. Here's a picture of it. And uh, the requirement was that, or the permission was, that 28 single family homes, detached homes, could be built here. And, and that was on uh, 19 acres of land. Then uh, over here was to be an assisted living senior center. And that's on 9.6 acres of land. Down here on about nine and a half acres, it says interchange. This land had to be dedicated to Caltrans, which is our state's authority for maintaining state highways and roadways. And so the thought was that maybe someday Lucas Valley Road, now we're talking about a period that in, it's 11 years ago, that someday Lucas Valley Road might be much more developed. And if it is, then maybe the interchange at Lucas Valley would have to be changed. And so the county required that the property owners give away this land here for, uh, for future inter interchange uh, purposes. And then all this green area is open space, and that's 70 acres of land that the property owners were obligated to just donate that land to the uh, community services district. So you are, you are now the owners of all of this land. And there may be some ways that, that some of this could be integrated into the community for the benefit of the, of the Marinwood area. This is the site where the proposed project is. You can barely make out the southern end of right here, the little truck stop that you've seen. This is our site that's proposed for development or approved for development. And you'll be able to spot it when you're driving down 101. There's a tree here and a tree here, and those two are very pronounced on the hillside. It's, it's very soft, a gentle slope here, and it starts getting steeper as it goes on up the, the hill. This is what the county approved in uh, 2005. 150 senior living apartments, 75 of which are to be independent living, 75 assisted living, and if, if anybody needs definitions of what those means, I'll be happy to get to, it, to that in a bit. A project of this size would typically dedicate about 40% of its space, and the county approved 94,400 square feet of space. So 40% of that can be used for the common areas. And common areas include a reception, offices, the dining rooms, the fitness room, community living room, card room, library, and of course the corridors, the hallways that go to all the, uh, the various apartments. And uh, if you do the math, if you look at 94,000 feet and assume that 60% of it can be used for living area, and then divide that by 150 apartments, you discover that the apartments are an average of 378 square feet. And uh, that's, uh, that's essentially a, a Motel 6 for old folks. Okay. And so that's what the county, in its vast wisdom, decided to approve here. And uh, my mission, our mission here, is to seek support to make this into a terrific project. Uh, we think it's ill-conceived. Uh, we think the location's fine, we think it's got a wonderful amenities and it can do just great. But we don't think that people who are moving out of their one or two or three or four thousand square foot houses want to move into a place the size of their college dorm room. So uh, that's uh, what the county approved and we picked it up and our goal is, is to take an already approved project and just try and make it lots, lots better. This is from the original plan that was approved in 2005. They created this H laying on its side, H-shaped building, and said you don't have to have an H-shaped building, but, uh, but that's where it's to go. And so that was the uh, plan, and it, it, with the 94,000 feet, 150 apartments that I talked about uh, uh, a moment ago. The site down here, oops, the site down here is very gently sloping, and as these contour lines get tighter and tighter together, I'm sure you already know, that means that the land, the site gets steeper as it goes on up the hill. So, once again, this is the area that was approved. We are not doing, our company, Venture Corporation, is not doing the residential. The people who, two families that own the property, have sold this to a, a home builder from the East Bay, and they're hoping to start construction on their 28 lots sometime soon. 
Our project is here, we have about nine and a half acres, and this is the roadway in that was approved or in fact required by the county. Some people have said, well, why wouldn't the road come in from this side or maybe from both sides? And the answer is that the county didn't want it that way. The, the county said that we're gonna put this land and set it aside to Caltrans, so now the state of California owns that land and they don't want to have anybody crossing it because someday they think that the interchange there may have to be improved or added onto or modified in some way. So the access to the project, which our new name for the project, they, it was originally approved under the name Oakview. We proposed to call our project the Oaks, and the way that we would access it is to take the Marin Wood exit, take Miller Creek, the Miller Creek Roadway, and then take a Marin Wood South, which is a creek here, build a small bridge that crosses the creek, and then comes in, and this is the area where the center would be, uh, will be constructed. So, one of the county's goals is, and this again is from the, from the Oakview Master Plan approval from 2005, one of their goals was to create a way so that people on the freeway, that's right here, don't see very much of the buildings, a little is fine, but not a lot, and the people who live, excuse me, who live here, uh, do not see a lot of the freeway. Ideally, if you live here, you, you see out over the freeway, on out into the dairy farmland, and, and if you walk up here, and I have many times, you have a terrific view of San Pablo Bay. You see the bay, and you see Mount Diablo across the bay. So this, in order to achieve this goal, the county said, we want you to, this is the slope line, you can just barely see going down through here. They said, excavate this part here, and pile the dirt out there, with a cut and fill, and then plant big trees here, and that will, will provide the, the visual barrier between the freeway and uh, the buildings. And it's not a 100% barrier, nor it intended to be, but to reduce it. Uh, and, and, and we feel that's a fine addition as well. So, once again, here's the property. The yellow line is our property line. Here's the, uh, the truck stop. Here's Miller Creek over here. People would get into this property by coming down Marinwood, crossing a small bridge right here, and coming following this road in, and then here's those two trees I pointed out a while ago. In this area here is where the project would be constructed. And uh, we've recently been told that we're going to be able to get permission, I'm pleased about this, uh, to come into the property during the construction time rather than dragging down Marinwood with, the, with construction trucks. The hope was that we could cross right here, get into our property at this point, and all the construction would go on here until the project was done, so it wouldn't impact anybody in the community at all, which we, we weren't sure we would get that support, but it appears we will. There's another view of the site, the same two trees down here is the, the, uh, the truck stop. So this is the plan that the county approved. Uh, and uh, right here, it would be the main entrance. You can see it looks kind of like that capital H laying on its side. Down here is Highway 101. Main entrance is here. These are all apartments, the common areas, dining, and so on. And these facilities are intended to serve three meals a day, plus snacks in the meantime, and provides lots of services. But most of the people don't drive. It's a shuttle service, so the traffic impact of a project like this is very limited. The back part of the building is here, this is the middle part of that capital H. So once again, this is, in essence, the county's approved project for the site. This is a section or a side view of it, sort of a cutaway, and here's that middle section of the H, here's the main entrance, and the intent here is just to show how it would work. In the county's version, they're three stories high, and the two stories in the front and three stories back here. The county doesn't mandate that, but that, the way that H lays out going up the slope, this is what happens, particularly if you want to have the 150 apartments that they're, uh, that they're proposing that uh, we, build, we build. This is the, uh, the front view of the, of the facility that emulates the county's plan. You can see down here, there's that capital H on its side. Here's the front, the main entrance here. The building that you see back here, the three-story building, is this one, the rear half of that, of that H. 150 apartments, you can see the, the hillside going, going on up, up beyond it. Um, you know, I, I, think it, I think it looks like a motel, 
but, uh, but this is what the accounting <coughs> wisdom uh, seemed to opt for. And, and our, our goal is just to do what's already approved only a whole lot better. We think we can make it into a very, very nice place with uh, changing a lot of the details. And so our hope is that you'll agree that maybe, maybe a first class place in Marin would makes more sense than, than uh, Motel 6. This is a condition that we think is an odd one, but it's nonetheless in the approvals from the county. These are intersections that I'm sure you all recognize. We have the Marinwood exit here, Miller Creek, uh, Las Colinas is right here. That's an intersection, so is that. There's another one on Marinwood right here. Uh, no, this particular one is on the freeway. Another freeway one here. They want all four of them signalized. Uh, why? <laughs> I mean, if I live here and I go to work in Nevada in the morning, I don't think I want to drive up here and wait for that signal, no. drive here and wait for that signal, no. drive here and wait for that signal, drive here and wait for that one, and then get on the freeway and go to work. No. But that's uh, nonetheless what the, uh, the county has uh, re approved, and we're prepared to do it. We think it's stupid, but, uh, but that's, uh, that's part of the plan and one of the things that we, that we would like to, uh, to see change. So once again, this is an overview of what's already been approved at the project. And as you can see, it's 150 apartments and 94,000 feet. And the apartments are, are motel room size on, on average. Once again, same site. Now we're going to throw some new ideas at you and, and see what you think. Uh, again, the building envelope. We're required to come in from this side, so we build a, a bridge across the creek. It's not a very big one. And uh, the roadway would come in through here. Property would be built right within this area here. This is our version. And this is a larger version than we're currently working on. But it, it gives you an impression. The red line around the outside is that same property line that we saw here. Here in this picture, it's yellow. Now in this one, it's red. But we would enter the property here. The main entrance is here. And this is a, uh, a center that is predominantly assisted living, partially independent living, and the exact numbers there are yet to be uh, worked out, but I'll give you some ideas. Okay, I think I'm out of order, but I'll do this anyway. Um, in this version, we call this Plan A, or Plan B, the city, the county's version we call Plan A, that's the one we've already gone through. Our variation is that it would be in this version, and we're going to tweak it again. There's 132 senior living apartments. That's a 12% reduction from what's approved by the county. Most developers will come in and say, I got approved for 20 homes, but I'd really like to do 30. Uh, we're approved for 150, but we'd like to do 12% less than that because it gives us an opportunity to make them bigger and nicer. And that's our goal. Our uh, common areas here in a, different, a completely different configures the operation or 35 percent of the total in this version we're pr proposing that they give us an increase in the square footage to 113,000 that's about 19,000 more square feet but 12 percent 18 apartments fewer in this project and what happens is it takes our square footage from 370 feet apiece to our very smallest studio apartments at 300 to 950 square feet. So we've got two bedroom, two bath apartments, as well as one bedroom, one bath, and so on, a variety of different ones for different applications. Our proposed plan here, which we're going to shrink again, is a 12% reduction in the uh, quantity of units, a 23% reduction in traffic. And the reason for that is we're predominantly seeking to make it an assisted living facility. What we found here in Marin, according to several studies, is that there's a tremendous need for senior living uh, facilities, but particularly on the assisted living side, that's where the big need is. And so that's what we would propose to put in here. And most of the people, not all, most of the people in an assisted living facility don't drive cars. So that, that we would have a shuttle on site. And if, if you live here and you want to be taken to, to church, or you want to go to the shopping center, or go to a movie, or out to lunch, the shuttle takes you. And as a result, you have a 12% reduction in, in uh, residential apartments, a 23% reduction in uh, uh, traffic impact, and, and also a reduction in sewer water and uh, trash pickup, all because we're, we're proposing to shrink the, the project. 
These pictures are not our property. These are other senior living communities that our architect just to put in there. They're kind of look and feel pictures. This is the center that we're proposing to build, only we have a new version now that's a, that's a bit smaller than this, but the, but the theme is the same, and you'll get a sense for that in a minute. We'd like to have a theater room. There will be a, a very elegant dining room serving three meals a day, and that would apply on any model. And uh, so this is the, uh, this is the center that, that we're uh, now, oops, not great with these buttons. Here's another view. The main entrance to the property is here. There are open air courtyards, and you'll see them better in another drawing. Large courtyard inside here, and another one in this building. And, uh, and they're designed for people to go inside there, soak up some sun, and then relax outdoors if they wish to have the privacy. Or there's also, all the way around, there's grounds for all kinds of outdoor activities. In this center, we're proposing that uh, in addition to a main dining room, there would be a secondary dining room over here, a fitness room, a card entertainment room, uh, a library, uh, an out oh, a theater, a really nice uh, theater room. Uh, outdoors, a dining terrace, bocce ball court, private patios, and a walking path all around and up through the, uh, the oak trees. So this is a quality of life issue. It's none of those things are included in this, the county's uh, version. Right button. I don't get it yet. There. These are the first floor uh, apartments. And so you can see kind of how it lays out. And here is that one of those two large indoor courtyards. I say indoors because it's surrounded by building, but it's open to the sky. And it, it, so it rains in here, and it rains in here, and it sunshines in there as well. So those are wonderful additions, and it allows people who live on this side or have an apartment on this side to look down into a heavily landscaped, really, really nice uh, uh, courtyard, outdoor courtyard area. And this is the uh, second floor uh, apartments. Uh, our configuration, uh, unlike the counties, is just two stories. And we think we can make everything fit beautifully in a two-story plan, and so that's, uh, that's the way this one is configured. All that you can see again, the courtyards here and all the open land. And we've got 10 acres of land, and most of it is untouched all the way down here, so there's lots of outdoor space for, for people to enjoy. This is a view from the highway. Uh, here you can just barely make out the building through the trees and the berm area that I showed you that cut and fill earlier. So the, the uh, building would be constructed here. In, in the very beginning days, you'll see lots more of it. Two years later, as the trees are maturing, then the, the, the view of it will be greatly obscured. The people who are living on the upper floor see right out over it and all the way out to the bay. These are not our project. These are just others that the architect put in, and they're supposed to say, well, these are kind of look and feel, quality of life sort of ideas that, that, uh, that could be implemented here. This is the main entrance to the property. You can see the hillside going on up behind it. I think that's pretty snazzy. And another view of the main entrance, looking kind of northerly. This is a sectional or side view. Here's the county's version, plan A. You can see their three-story building back here and the two-story section in the front. I showed you that a few minutes ago. Here's our version. So we don't go up as high as they do. We're just two stories, but we spread out a little more, and our goal is to make our apartments much bigger and much nicer than, than what, the, what the county approved. And this is the uh, bridge. And uh, if you received invitations from us, you saw this picture already. And uh, we propose that the southern end of uh, Marinwood, where the road simply ends, this would begin. It's not a very big bridge, but it's two lanes wide, plus a bicycle and hiking path here. And that crosses over into the property and into the area that you've seen. The only destination would be the Oaks, the senior living community. But one of our thoughts is that there may be other uses that, that, uh, uh, the, that the Marin Wood community could use. It. You, you are the proud owner of 70 acres of, these, of this land, and maybe we could find a way to put some of that to work to the benefit of the community. I don't know for what. But picnic grounds or hiking land or, or whatever. And that's one of the reasons that we wanted to come tonight, 
because we think you're going to have some good ideas. Our mission is just to take an already approved project and make it a whole lot better. So that's that's the plan. And here is uh, now what we're working on, our next version. And, and uh, we're, we're pretty close now. We've found some ways to increase the efficiency of the architectural design that, that I showed you a moment ago. And we can now go take our square footage down to something approximately in the range of 98,000 feet. Remember, we're approved for about 95,000. And uh, if we can get a few extra thousand feet, not the 19,000 that we talked about earlier, but a few thousand extra square feet for building, then we have more common areas for people to enjoy who live there and we can make the apartments bigger. And in this version, the apartments would be 300 to 950 square feet. It's a 20% reduction from what's approved by the county, a 34% reduction in traffic impact, and 20% reduction in sewer water and trash. And by the way, there was a complete environmental impact report done for this project. And uh, in that, it was determined that the peak morning commute traffic for this project, as conceived here, is about 22 cars. So it wouldn't even be noticed. So that, and it's because it's a senior center. It is, there aren't children living here. We're not finding a place for kids to go to school. It, it is not an affordable housing project, and it is intended to have very little impact of any kind on the community, except that it is absolutely intended to be far and away the nicest senior living center in <coughs> Marin County. This is number one, and it's in Marinwood, and we're really excited about that. Uh, one last impact, my friend uh, Justin Kai has uh, said uh, a couple of times, well, what, what are the economics in it for the Community Services District, and a quick look at the map uh, is that we would this project would be paying in property taxes annually about four hundred thousand uh, dollars. To just quickly ask you about that, Robert. So that four hundred thousand would that would that be a calculation of the of, for the roughly one point eight percent of the assessed value in total? Yes. Okay. So then, ju just to clarify, we use one point two, but yes. One point two. Okay. So just to clarify, we don't receive. That, that whole portion well, we know of, that, of that 1%, we receive roughly 20% of that. So right, so it's, and, and, less than that, just and to, when uh, I spoke with you earlier, I, I think that was the number, that this, this is the portion of it that the CSD would get. This is the what we have to pay to the county, yeah. and uh, so some $80,000 a year, more or less, would find its way to the CSD for whatever purposes. Uh, so I guess you'd be modifying that number. Yeah. So, uh, so I, my question now, if this is an approved project, why are we here? What's the point of this and why are we taking up your time? And, and the reasons for that are, are, are a couple. First, we think that Marin would deserves a far better senior community than the one that the county approved. Uh, we think that motel room apartments are too small and that it ought to be something much nicer than that. Uh, we think that the Marin County approved project offers too low a quality of life, and it's so easy to fix it, and we just ask for support to, to do that. And, and by the way, the only thing that we need is to have a little bit more square footage. We're going to cut way back on the total number of apartments. We'd like to have a few more square feet so that we can make the apartments larger and nicer and more common areas for the folks who live there. We'll reduce the total quantity of apartments. One second, I'll shut it up in one minute by 20%, and uh, you've seen that the traffic impact reduction as well. So uh, with this, I'll just conclude with one, one remark. We have over there on that counter some comment cards. And if, if you have heard anything here that you think makes sense or things you don't like, we would love it if you write them down. There's a place for you to put your name and address, and you don't have to do that. If, if you'd like to put that in, we promise we're not going to call you and bug you about anything, but, but you don't need to put anything in. What we'd like to know is if, this, if you would prefer Plan B or Plan C to what the county approved, then we'd love to know about it. If you say, gosh, wouldn't it be great if it had a one of these or one of those, we'd love to know about that. But please use the cards, scribble down any notes you've got, and we promise we'll, we'll pay great attention to them. Is and with that, I'm done. Can use for I'm sorry? Is there an email address we can use for comments? Uh, I can give you an email address if you'd yeah. like to have that, sure. Uh, we just uh, have a card that's a place for you to write down what you like, and if you would like us to contact you with, with 
following up on your suggestion, then put your name and contact information and we'll do it. If you wouldn't like us to, then don't put your contact information. But, but if the comments are generally supportive, do a great job rather than a Motel 6, then, uh, then we're going to take them to the supervisor and say, please help us get a few extra square feet so we can make this place much nicer and smaller. So uh, that's the plan. And with that, I'll uh, shut up unless I have some questions. Please. So just out of curiosity, by doing a reduction in the apartment quantity, what does that affect the fiscal impact with property taxes because you have less people paying the property taxes? Does the, if you had more spaces to sell, would you have more property taxes coming to us? Or no. by having bigger spaces to sell for more, then like how does it affect the fiscal impact, the quantity of apartments? Okay, good question. Uh, the answer is that the county has required that this be a rental property, not a for sale property. And therefore, the uh, amount of rent that it earns somebody who pays $100 or somebody who pays $200 would have no bearing on the property taxes. The property taxes are a function of what we paid for the property in the first place and how much we spent to, to build it, and that number is about $40 million. So, uh, so the property taxes will be based upon that number, and that's how that calculation was Determined down below. So that's not going to change based on the number of residents or the amount of apartments. Well, it would change a little. For example, let's say that uh, people said, "Gosh, if uh, uh, in this model we were showing some uh, roughly 120, maybe it's 122 or 25 or something." Um, if somebody said, "Oh, gosh, you just have to have 150," which was originally approved, and we, we don't think that's necessary, but let's say somebody did. Well, then it would cost more. It would cost another, to do it, to take this up to 150, it would cost another five or six million dollars. And so the property taxes would go up because we spent that much more on it. But there is no benefit to us in terms of property taxes if it's fewer or more. It has no bearing on us one way or another. I hope I've answered your question. Okay. So what are the projected rents? Yeah. I'm sorry? What are the projected rents? I don't know. And I'd, I'd love to say that I'm trying to dodge your question, but the truth is we don't know yet. And the reason we don't is because we don't know what the county is going to allow us to, to uh, build. If, if we're given permission... So you did pencil out how much you'd get for each apartment in this? Well, in the, very, in the very beginning, when we first got involved in the project a year ago, and uh, I mean, I can tell you there's several thousand dollars a month that I can't... I, I don't know at this moment what those numbers are going to be. And part of it is, and we'll hope to know soon, because this is a business deal, and naturally we hope that it will be a successful one. But at this point, we don't know yet uh, where it will be. But Marin is a costly place, and I would expect that these will not be inexpensive. Okay, and maybe I misunderstood. So you're the developer, but you're not going to retain ownership. You're developing it for someone else. For no. No, no. Uh, our hope is to bring in an operator who would join us in the project. We're the builder and developer of the project. And there are professional companies, national firms, with many, many facilities all over the country, and some really extraordinary high quality ones. And they're in the business of operating the day-to-day -day operations of these centers, and we're not. So we'll bring in an operator, and we would be a partner with the, uh, with the operator of the property. And that would be selected after we have a better handle on what exactly this place will be. I mean, just in the last half an hour, I've shown you three different alternatives, and we'll try to get those tightened down as quickly as we can. Yeah, that's quite a bit of information. So, with 120 assisted living apartments, how are you going to do 22 cars? Because that just doesn't seem that the staff, No, that's that just I'm sorry. Seem. That's the commute. So right. these are people who who are who work here. Yes. So this is the morning, on all the environmental impact studies, they make us do a report on how much traffic this project is likely to generate. And they want to know during peak hour traffic, they want to know first thing in the morning between 6.30 and 9 o'clock, uh, how many people are out on the road and what impact is that going to have on somebody who lives in Marinwood today and now he, she is trying to get out on the freeway. Is this going to have a significant impact? In this case, these people are coming into the property during those peak hours, not going out. And uh, according to the environmental impact report, 
it's approximately 22 cars. And we'll, we'll obviously try to promote ride sharing as, as much as we, as we possibly can. But let's face it, 22 cars is, is not even noticeable. But how could it be? I mean, for an operation that size, there's got to be more than 22 staff members. They come at all different times of the I day. I know, but coming in in the morning, I would assume there would be more than 22. Well, not according to the to the uh, Marin County Environmental Impact Report, which is 750 boring pages long, <laughs> and, uh, and it's thoroughly thoroughly covered in there. And by the way, their number was not 22; it was 26. But but 26 was based on 150 apartments, and we pared that down. <coughs> Stephen. It, it's a beautiful project, absolutely stunning project. I'm, oh, thank you. Um, I, uh, and I hope, uh, you know, from what I see, I love it. Um, my concern is um, the burden on the community, for example, the, the infrastructure burden on the community. So from this bridge forward, is that all your infrastructure, or yes. are we helping you build that? Yes. Okay. Um, then I guess really the only thing that we would see impact-wise realistically is more service calls, medical service calls, because that's the reality of the, these type of places. Uh, but other than that, it's great. Is there, are you filling up your, your uh, entitlement? Is there, will there be a dish, do you anticipate in uh, like phase B, phase C, uh, if this project gets approved? You're asking whether the project would be phased? Well, what I'm saying is you're, we're looking at one project. Yeah. Do you anticipate additional projects? Because that's a lot of land and, and, you know, if you're building the infrastructure, I could see, you know, the potential of the project growing. No, we don't. We imagine that it would be approved by some final dimensions and sizes that we've discussed here tonight and then it would be uh, constructed and there wouldn't be any phase two or any additions thereafter. When you break ground, what's the anticipated time frame from start to finish? Uh, the anticipated time frame is nine to 12 months to build. Okay. And uh, I told you that our hope is to come off of the freeway because it's a bother otherwise. And uh, so th that's the timeline. Another good question, and this is Marty Marin, so how long is it going to take to get through the process to get it to the final approval? And uh, my uh, friend in Mill Valley says that in Marin County, the wheels of justice are square and turn accordingly. And so as a result, of, who knows, but we're, our hope is in the next uh, four or five months, maybe we'll be done and ready to launch. Do you have any responsibility or requirement to offer a certain percentage to your income families or assisted financial services? Uh, the jury's a little bit out on that, and, and, and here's why. The original plan that I showed you, what we call Plan A, the county's plan, has, is designed for 75 independent living and 75 assisted living people. And of the 75 independent living, they'd like to have 15 of those be affordable. And, uh, but in our plan, the newest version, we don't have any uh, independent living apartments at all because the study of Marin shows that there's a tremendous need for assisted living. And they still uh, have people who need help though, financially. So would you transfer that to the assisted living people? The, the county doesn't want to do that because there is a, a very difficult thing to calculate. And, and I think to some degree, here's why. I, I, I'm at a certain age, let's say, where, where I move into a facility like this, and, and I, need, I need somebody to come by at 10.30 and give me my medicine, and that's it. I go in, I walk down the hall to get my, get my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I go play shuffleboard or, or play, go down to the card room or go down to the movie room. I'm fine, that's all I need. Another person has a much greater need for, for bathing or assistance with getting dressed or, or assistance even eating or all sorts of things that, that a lot of us, including I, are going to experience one day. And so uh, each of these has its own price point. It costs more. If, if I need a lot more attention than you need, 
then it's going to cost me more than it's going to cost you. And now we get into complications of uh, uh, how to determine how the, any affordable housing component in that thing works. But here's the one, I'm almost done, here's one last part. The county does have a, a, an idea for that. And that is, and it's targeted specifically at assisted living, also at, at all kinds of large projects like office buildings, industrial buildings, shopping centers. And that is, there is a, a, a linkage ordinance that says that if you are going to build your new industrial building, or you're going to put up your new office building, then you have to pay a fee as a part of your approval process, and that is an affordable housing fee. And it's piles of money. You have to pay that money to the county so the county can then use that at a place that's more sensible to put in a new office building. There's no point in putting an affordable housing in an office building or an assisted living facility. But they want to take the money that we have to put in and then put it into an assisted, I mean, into an affordable housing project somewhere in Marin at a location that they get to decide. So part of our cost of, our, of building the project is indeed affordable housing. So by changing from plan A to plan B, you're starting a big chunk of assistance to financial services for because they're not going to be the quantity available. I don't know. I don't know what you said. I don't know how to explain. Pretty much, you're taking away the opportunity for people to have the assisted living because there won't be that number of spaces available. The county doesn't have. We're taking away the assisted living. Plan, the difference between plan A and plan B dropping from 75 to the lower number mm -hmm. of independent living, yep. you're not going to be able to meet the 15 required low income spaces. Right. So we therefore, have. you're now no longer responsible for that to those people. Well, we're responsible for it by paying the money for it. We have to pay the money so that the county can assemble that with cash from other projects and build centers that do exactly what you're describing. So that is the point. So We're keep not them separate, the, the low-income and the higher end. Keep them separate. Just keep them separate. That's basically what it is. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think it's the county's mission, or certainly not our I'm mission, to keep them. your mission. The, the, I'm not asking about that. Well, I don't have control over the county's laws. No, no, I'm asking about your mission in your development to separate out the lower income from the facility, is what it sounds like. If the county requires and can find some equitable way to have us not pay those hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars and instead have an affordable housing component in here in an assisted living center, we're open to talking about it. We're not trying to dodge our responsibilities at all. Absolutely willing to talk about that. But, but so far, the county has said, no, no, if you're doing a, a retail center, an office building, an industrial building, an assisted living facility, then we want you to pay us the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then we get to decide where we want to spend that money, but we have to spend it on affordable housing. But that has nothing to do with this project. You talk about your overall company, what they do, with office buildings and what have you. The fee is not just for this, it's for all the other developments you do. I'm, not, I'm sorry, I don't understand. It's 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 to pay this fund for yes. housing. Yes. Every development that, that comes online, and you know in Marin we don't have a lot of developments that come online because we're a very anti-development community, but we do have some, and every time a new one goes up, there's been new office buildings in San Rafael recently, we see when we go by on the freeway, big ones, a lot of things happen in Nevada, and, and anything that's in county jurisdiction requires that money be contributed for affordable housing, and the county in its own wisdom gets to decide how they want to use it. And if they could show some equitable way to integrate it into a project like this when everybody has different levels of care, and the care that you have this year is likely to be very different than the care you'll need next year, it's easy for me to understand why they said that's just too complicated. How do, you, how do we do that? So, please. So this is a business, and you have to make a profit. The fee that you are charging is Think about it. So just how much money are they going to make? 
I'm trying to think the best way to, to, segre to segregate that. Um, the, I suppose the notion is that perhaps um, assisted living apartments are more profitable, perhaps, than uh, independent living. It's, they're, they're probably a trade-off because the amount of services that you have to provide, just for the guy like me who needs his meds at 10.30, uh, or somebody who needs a lot of help, people who are skilled workers there are very expensive. So you pay a great deal more money to, for the people who are there to help the, the assisted living people. The independent living people have a key, they come and go. They have the right to go down and have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they can go play shuffleboard. But, but we don't have to provide them any services of any kind. So when the, when the dust settles, it's probably a trade-off. So with the size of these Sorry. units, you don't expect couples to move in. With the size of these units, you don't expect couples to be moving in. Actually, we do, and not a lot. There's a, there are some two-bedroom uh, <coughs> suites that are, are properties that are included in here, apartments, and there are some one-bedrooms that are a couple. And, uh, and that's, that's uh, popular, but it's not the majority. This so, is pattern, oh, sorry. So you mentioned that there are a number of operators of these assisted living facilities around the country and that you're looking at them as potential partners in this. Would the differences in plans A, B, and C alter the quality or the type of people that you bring in as potential operating partners? Um, probably to some degree. The, the big, really award-winning kind of firms that get all the recognition the high quality centers probably aren't going to be too keen on motel rooms. Did you um, think with the plan C you actually could get more award winning operators to work with you rather than plan A? I'm sorry. With plan C you were thinking that you would be able to get award winning operators more likely to work with you than with plan A. That's sort of what you're implying. But they um, well, I think that a, a lot more people will be attracted to a quality project mm -hmm. than a motel. So, uh, I, I but I'm presuming you've had some discussions with these operators already. <coughs> yeah, we have, and and everybody likes quality. They think that quality pays over the long term, and and uh, that there's a, a lot to be said for doing a first class operation. And so the, the the really great operators who've been so successful with so many communities like this around the country are are, are ones that are very fussy about the quality being tip top. Do you plan on accepting dementia patients? Do we plan accept on them? accepting dementia Yes, patients? there's a the building on the left that I showed you. There's a memory care unit there. As a part of assisted living, almost all assisted living centers today have a, what they call memory care. And, and that would be for a person with very low level of dementia to more and all the way to Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. But this is not a skilled nursing center. This is a, a facility where there would be a, a, a section allocated to people with memory care needs, and, uh, but, uh, but not anything to do with skilled nursing. There's no full-time physicians on staff. They're certainly on call if something like that would ever be needed. But, but uh, the answer to your question is yes. And, and we find that that's a growing, I'm sure you know, it's a growing need across the country today. And, and particularly here in Marin, because our population is older than most of the other counties. Yes, ma'am. So now I, my question changed, thank you. Um, so you said earlier that there would be a lot of skilled people coming, but then you said it's not a a skilled, a skilled people who would be working there, but then if it's not skilled nursing, that's usually not skilled care caregivers. So that's, I mean, I, I coordinate care for a couple of people who have memory issues. Ah, well, then you're knowledgeable so, in this we're area. Not, yeah, so we're not talking skilled care. We're, we're not talking about nursing. nursing. This is not, right. and, and maybe the term skilled, it, it has a special meaning in, in your particular case. because it means you're, skilled. But, but, it means skilled and it means that there's higher wage and more. Yeah. Training. I think I'm, I'm trying to say that, that some kid who graduated from we're in community college and comes over and says, I'd like to apply for a job taking care of, of uh, elderly people who need help. It is not qualified. That's, but those are the people who work 
in facilities like you're talking about? The people that the, that the operators bring in are either trained by the operators or are, are already well experienced in the field. And, and, and the truth is it's not our area of knowledge. We don't know how to say this person is just right and that person is not right. But the, but the top operators do and it'll be their, their job. It's, yeah, it is, it is, it's a complex, it's a complex and you know, ever-changing uh, I'm sure you're right. area and, yeah. and, um, and quite a demanding one. So you're talking about what your preference is, zero independent living, all assisted care, larger units, not, when I think of a high quality smaller units, I think of a, a European style assisted care facility, which is very small apartments, very high quality design, and, and, and extraordinarily nice, and they're small. Um, but it sounds like you don't feel that that's something that a high quality operator would be interested in. Well, I just United don't, States. I don't, I don't think that our average assisted living person wants to live in a motel room. And uh, maybe at a point... I don't think anybody wants to live in a motel room. But what I'm suggesting is that the size does not mean that it has to be like a motel room. I mean, that just doesn't... This is the 21st century. Well, I, I'm aware of the tiny homes concept that's going on in the country, particularly in I'm the urban areas. Little, little uh, itty bitty homes, and, and I think they have a wonderful place, particularly for people who are like my kids went away to. Uh, I'm from Marin County. My kids went off to college. They came back after college, and my kids couldn't stay here. They couldn't afford to grow up in the community where they grew up because it was too bloody expensive there. And so I think that, that, that our county is in great need for affordable housing and ought to use some of its 88 percent of Marin County that's permanently dedicated open space and allow that, some of that, that property to be converted into affordable housing. I mean, we have uh, some 560,000 acres of land sitting idle, and I'm, I'm proud to be an environmentalist and glad that we're preserving that property. But why don't we take 20 or 30 of that 560,000 acres and, and make a 500 little tiny, really nice, charming, wonderful homes? For kids like mine who graduated from college and would like to be able to live in the county where they grew up. So uh, that's the kind of thing that, that I would like to see. And pardon me for getting off on my affordable housing. Oh, that's housing okay. I, I grew up here. I grew up in Turland, so you don't, you know, no, we're I'm on preaching the choir on this one, no? Huh? In your Plan B and Plan C, uh, are, the build, are some of the buildings still dug down into the hillside? Uh, there is, uh, on the, on the up, up, uphill side, there is some excavation, and then the dirt behind it will be terraced on up. Uh, so people at the grade, our hope is that everybody who's at ground floor can have his own or her own private patio outside. So yes, on the very back side, there would be some excavation, and the architects are right now doing the calculation to see is it this much or this much, but whatever that number is will be, um, will then be terraced up and terraced up a couple of steps so that you're not looking out at a, at a stone wall. So the original mitigation uh, elevation that, that you showed, the first, the back story that is farthest away from the freeway yeah. was dug down, at the very end it was dug down, the entire story. In the county and, the, and then the, yeah, then the lowest, uh, the, the ground floor was, not buried all the way, but just at the very back. But then the projection that you showed that you said was a similar massing that just had the picture from the front, it didn't look to me like it was dug in. It looked to me like that was a, a massing, but the massing concept had changed, so there was more mass showing, but I couldn't tell because you didn't show so I knew. Based upon our understanding of the county's drawings, and we understand them because we've calculated them, uh, our, the excavation that would be required for our, our two-story project would be much less than what was contemplated for the 150-unit uh, version. Uh, there are different ways to overcome that. One way would, for example, would be to spread your project out over a larger area. The county went more vertical to get that H shape that you, you saw in the drawings. But those details are underway now, and the architects are going to do the cut and fill. And the county wants us to have to, to, to dig up enough of the dirt in the back so that we can create that earth berm in the front 
so that the view is obscured from the freeway and, and, and the other direction. And uh, they don't want us to import tons of fill to do that, so they'd like to have a balanced site. Sure. And it'll be quiet. I mean, the berm, the berm access is a great sound barrier. And it, otherwise, it's going to be unbelievably loud. Yeah. Uh, we think you're right. If, it's, if the berm is angled correctly, it will deflect a lot of that noise. It'll right. make it louder on the other side of the highway for the cows. Yep, you're absolutely right. <laughs> yes? In your plans, what do you propose for parking? For parking spaces between the berm and the beginning of oh, the berm? On the uphill side of the, uh, of the earth berm uh, will be the parking. And in the last version that was done, and right now this plan C is being tweaked, and so we don't have the final numbers, but in the last version we had 56 parking spaces total. And that would be for staff, that would be for visitors, somebody wants to come over and visit mom, then uh, he or she has to park the car there for an hour and a half, they came in and they're going to have lunch with mom. And uh, so the total spaces in the current configuration is 56, and that could change a few one way or another. Still seem to the 22 commute time part estimate by the county is pretty low. It's not only for staff, but in assisted care, oftentimes you've got caregivers that will come in to assist people, right. pressing, what have you. Yeah. So, and the fact that the county is cutting all of these stoplights so often there seems to go against what the county is proposing for traffic. Maybe uh, the county didn't take into consideration the fact that the, 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 the shifts, the time shifts, the people who work there are, are working there 24 hours a day. And so there's three shifts a day, and the shifts don't have to be during commute hours. They could be before or after commute hours, and maybe that's what they took into consideration when they said there were 26 cars anticipated to come during the morning uh, commute term. Uh, I'm not sure how that's determined, but, uh, but that's what this monstrous environmental impact report says. Well, try to do away with the four lights. Yeah. <laughs> so each unit does not have, each unit will not have its own parking space? No. No, because the, the, uh, the people who have cars are independent living people and every one of them has at least one car and we'd need much more parking if we went back to that and it would of course generate a great deal more traffic going up and down Marinwood if we have a, if we switch back to a, an independent living project and the county may say gee I have to do a few and we're certainly open to it if that's the case but but uh, our hope is to make the, the, tra the traffic impacts of this project be so negligible that they're not even noticed. That's the goal. Yes, ma'am. Is this the second project uh, uh, allowed by the county? Because I heard years ago it was disallowed to build a facility because of the traffic, because of that. And now we say it's the county is approved it on. So uh, yes, it was approved 11 years ago. And it was, that time it was I, well, um, it, it is it is uh, approved. I promise. I promise. And if it would be helpful for you, for me to send you a copy of the approval, I would be delighted to do it, and even answer questions about it if that would be helpful in any way. But it was approved 11 years ago, and we're just trying to make what they did then a lot better and more recognizing today's world than, than the world we were in 11 years ago. Uh, I, I know that. What was that email address? I'm sorry? You had an email address you were going to give out. Email. Email. Oh, does everybody want to write it down? Oh, yeah. Okay, Mike, you can write. I can write. Um, my uh, email address is Eves, that's spelled E-V-E-S, at Venture Corporation, uh, starting with the letter V, uh, Venture and the word Corporation completely spelled out, Eves at VentureCorporation.com, and that'll come to me, and if I can help or answer anything or send you a copy of something, 
please know that I'd be delighted. Thank you so much. You're welcome very much. I'm so glad I, I had to get that in while I still remember. It's okay. Uh, so, I, I, just a quick question. Uh, I know there's been discussion of continuing the bike path, uh, the bike route over to uh, Marin Commons. Um, I guess it go if they did that, it would go across your property. Are you amenable? I, I don't want you to give away the store here, but is that something that you would consider? Uh, we think it's a terrific idea. Okay. We've heard that from several people, and why not? How are we hurt? I think we're helped. I'm loving it ever, ever more. I think it's a fun idea, and, and it's, it's a tremendous uh, opportunity for a guy on a bike to go all the way through the property, up and over the other side and back around. I think it's a neat idea. Is this based on any other? Ex is this based on any other existing facility like uh, Drake Terrace? Or no. <laughs> In a word, we think or that we can do a better job. We've, we've, I personally have visited every senior facility of any size. I haven't been to a couple of duplexes, but to every substantial one in Marin County, and this is in another league. Um, I don't mean it's any more expensive. We don't think it's any more expensive. We just think it could be done better. And also, it'll be brand new. The, the, the ones that were built in the 70s. And uh, this will be brand new and have all the newest features. And I, I just think we can do a terrific job and be proud of it. I live in Marin. I'd like to be proud of it. I may move in. <laughs> Very close. What up? Yes, sir. Um, you said it's all right, though? Yes. Is it for like 10 years and then the unit will be sold or is it rental forever? Um, I've heard of ones like you're describing where you get it for five years or 10 years and then it gets sold. None of that. It's just simply available for, for rent and, and, and if somebody wants to stay there for a month and then go somewhere else, they have every right to go. Okay. Sure. So that's when, if it's assisted care, then once you aren't eligible for assisted care, then you, you go into a skilled nursing facility. That's right. Okay, just making sure. So you have no permitting for skilled nursing, strictly assisted Nor any desire for nursing. They're different, yeah, it's a different. I mean, it's a different field. They're different animals. It's yeah. a different field altogether and one that we're not going to pursue. How many more square feet are you proposing? How many more square feet? Well, the newest version, you know, over the 94.4 that's approved, uh, the newest version has us at about 98 or 99, so four or 5,000 feet. And by the way, in, in Marin and in all counties everywhere, if, if you have a, um, a development of some kind, maybe it's a house, you want to build a new house, and there's your lot right over there, and you want to build your new house, and in your town, there is a what they call a floor area ratio ordinance, which says that if your lot is this big, then you can build a house that big and no more. Well, we don't have a floor area ratio ordinance here, but we have an already approved project for 94,400 feet. And so we have a doctrine here called substantial conformance. And so if we come in and say, well, we'd like to do 94,401 square feet, any county official is going to say, well, that's substantial conformance. So it is, it is 90, how about 95,400? Is that substantial conformance? And the answer in Marin County is, yeah, probably so. The general uh, rule of thumb in Marin is 4 or 5%. So if you're within 4 or 5%, then you're in substantial conformance. But this one's a little bit of a, of a twist because we're talking about taking the apartment count down. People don't do that. Everybody wants to push their numbers up. They want more and more. And we're talking about taking it down. So we're talking about substantially reducing, maybe by 20%, the number of apartments, but increasing the square footage so that the common areas are bigger and nicer and so the apartments are bigger and nicer. And, and, and that's the only plan. So we're hoping that the county will give us a little bit of, of wiggle room so that we can make this absolutely the nicest senior living center in Marin County. That's, that's our goal. I, I think that the county will, I'm hoping anyway, will give us some, uh, a little bit of, of, of room. We don't need a lot, but maybe maybe 4 or 5% would be terrific. And so if, if any of you would, would be kind enough to call Supervisor Connolly and say, I met that Rob fellow and he seemed like a nice enough guy, and we'd like to see if maybe we can get some support for 
for what he has in mind, we would certainly be grateful for your help. We can go ahead and build what's already approved, but it just, it, we can, I just think we can do better. So why not do better? So it's a little bit more square footage, but it's probably less asphalt for a parking lot. Much less. Much less asphalt, much less trash removal, much less uh, sewer and water consumption, uh, much less traffic. Right, so the, the slight square footage increase allows us to just simply do a better job on the project. And that's the goal. Well, am I off the hook? <laughs> I just want to know, you, you don't like the third level. But say you put on the third level, and then you have the same amount of apartments, and then you can make only the apartments bigger. Am I living in a cloud? I mean, I would think that you, I could not imagine living in 300 square feet. I couldn't either. <laughs> so I'm thinking, Except in college. Yeah, that's right. So why, I mean, why couldn't you put on the third deck floor and then spread out all those 120? Well, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any difference whether you stretch this way or you stretch this way. The square footage gets added up either way. Well, I would think you'd, you'd have 120 places in two, and either two levels, but if you have them in three levels, you have lost your place. I have to say that I don't follow that logic. Well, because you have all these more square feet. You're, you've got you know, 60 here and 60 here, but then you have the third level. But I could achieve, the, wouldn't you agree, that I could achieve the same thing? Instead of going up a floor, I could maybe go out a floor and get to the very same place. But I would think that you have the county that you have that much room. But the county cares about the square footage. Square footage. Square footage. Square footage. Square footage. Square footage. So what do you think it's more attractive to have it spread out? I think so. Mm -hmm. well, I, I think that's right. Well, they didn't care to the family allowed to send the I think part of, part of it has to do with the amount of parking. I, I think, if I understand correctly, and I, I don't know, you would know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that part of the master plan has to do with as you're looking at, you know, as you're looking out and you go through Murray County, what do you see? A fair amount of open space. There's the land, the landscape, and the amount of landscape you see in relation to the buildings is part of the value. The open space that you talk about is largely West Moran. I mean, that's, and that's a whole nother, you know, we have National Park, we have State Park, we've got the Marin Agricultural Trust, we've got, you know, there's- We also have my backyard in Mill Valley. Well, let's move yeah. there. Um, I'd like to move to your backyard. I wish you would. <laughs> Come on up. Okay. I'll buy a bottle of the bottle of wine. We'll sit out and take a look. But the county won't so, let me do that. So the, what, what I'm understanding is that part of the master plan is about mass and how much mass people look at when they look at a building. It's like the things in downtown Santa Clara. Now they are what they are. They're quite large. They're visually large. Yep. Um, and they were reduced. I mean, you can reduce buildings visually without actually making them smaller. You mean architecturally? Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Just like you can make small things look big architecturally, mm -hmm. depending on the design. Our it's hope, harder to do either one of those things. Our hope here is to make this look smaller by make, taking away the three stories, try to keep it where it's, it's spread out a little bit more on the ground. We reduced the square footage from our original goal of 119 down to 98 or 99, maybe, and um, uh, and keep it in, in two floors. It makes it more efficient as well. well and architecture is really expensive. Yeah. Just Yeah, it's not something we want to do. Because when you dig down, you sink the building. That's you right. get all the square footage, our, but you don't have to look at it. Our good news is that our slope doesn't get steep until uh, the hill comes. Right, right, right. So our, our, our dig isn't too severe. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your gobs of questions.